consider. What do we want to consider? Let's find out. In Philippians 3, verse 18 through 19. In 18, it says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. Now, this is that you have to consider where you made a mistake, right? Because often you're going to try many things in this world. And let's be honest, you're not going to consider God. You only consider God when you hit a roadblock, you know? I'm not saying everyone, but some people. For some people, you only consider God when you hit a roadblock and things fail and people are not with you and you're seeing who the real family and the real friends in your life really are, right? And then you consider, whoa, you know, maybe this wasn't for me. Maybe this life is not for me. Maybe this life of sin, of adultery, of fornication, of lying, of blasphemies, of cursing God is not for me. You know, you have to look at the fact that there are so many people who are going through so many things and they give up on God. Are you going to be the same? Isn't there a voice speaking to you and saying, well, you could do better, you could do greater, hang in there, hold on to God's unchanging hand? Sometimes you believe it's your pastor and then you start to think, he's just a man, he doesn't understand what I'm going through. But don't forget, we just mirror the word of God. And in John it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The very fact that you could recollect the word that your pastor was saying, is it really the pastor? Or is it God speaking to you? It's his word. And he's writing it on the fleshy tables of your heart so that you could continue in grace. But should we continue in grace or sin rather that grace may abound for us? We don't want to continue in sin, but we want to consider the fact that we did sin. And we want to consider how did we get to that place where we even forgot God and justified ourselves as being people of God when we weren't doing anything near what God wanted us to do. Consider it. So you don't make the same mistakes again. Now, you may be saying, well, what about my marriage? I, let me consider or rather reconsider my marriage and say that, you know, I made a mistake. I was young. I was foolish, Pastor. I, um, I jumped into it too early. You can't reconsider what God has joined together. You cannot reconsider the children in which you've brought forth from that marriage. But what you can do is have faith that God says, I can make the impossible possible happen for you. And if you believe that, then that means that everything that you may have made as a mistake in your marriage could be made right by having the faith of God. Now, when you're chastening your husband, your wife, or trying to bring your family back together, don't use your own words. It may start by your own words. Hey, let's try this, this thing of God. Let's, let's go to church. But after that point, you need to learn to apply the word of God. With what little you know, God will fill you up with the word. Pray, man has always to pray. Why? Because it's a conversation with God that you could consider more than what your eyes could see, than what your ears could hear, than what your heart is feeling and can understand. God will fill you up with more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as long as you consider that there's someone greater and higher than yourself. And if you put him first and you don't question him when he says, hey, it's a bad idea, then everything will be all right. He will make your crooked ways straight and everything will turn around for the better. God bless.